Made and, made and Cameron are on the ball this morning. This morning we are really connected to last week to some degree as we started talking about making the most of time. There is a uh, two-page packet of information coming around to you. Uh, the first page is uh, several questions and several scripture references that we want to look at this morning. And the second page is a track that I have had run for some time. And, excuse me, and just waiting for what I felt to be the right time to give it to you because I, I really want you to read the entirety of this one. Uh, and I've tried not to put too much reading on you, but I just. Uh, I can't find any part of this track that is that is not valuable. And so uh, the second page is front and back. It's investing time. It is about making the most of time uh, and about using time uh, wisely. And if we if we at the end of class have a moment or two to look at that, I'll point out a thing or two from that track. But I, I really want you to to read uh, the entire thing, if you will, uh, because uh, Mr. Webster has a lot to say about uh, time in general. You know, we come to today's lesson, Making the Most of Time, part two, as I've outlined the class here, but today specifically is about some schedule suggestions for your daily spiritual life. Now, maybe when you hear that, you think, oh boy, here we go, right? He's about to do what he told us he wasn't going to do, and you're wrong. I'm not about to do what I told you I wasn't going to do. What I told you I wasn't going to do is, I'm not going to stand up here and say, now you need X amount of time, and you need to block this, and you need X amount of time here, and you need to do it here, and you need to... And, and here's what I realize. I realize that we live life that way, okay? So what, would, what, what you're setting there may be demanding of me, and, and, and you may be frustrated here now in week 10, this class is almost over, but, but in your mind you may be saying, if you understand that that's the world we live in and that's how we operate, then why aren't you using that spiritually? And, and the answer is the same answer, tell me you got back up here with one? Wow, wow. Marie ran the copies this week, so uh, finally somebody got it right, right? <clears throat> finally had enough, so thank you, sir. Um, but, but in all reality and in all seriousness, while, while an employer can say, we need you here 7 to 4, or we need you here 6 to 3, or, or we need you here 8 to 5, and while an employer can say, you, you can take off 30 minutes for lunch or an hour for lunch. The, the reality of Christianity, and this is, this is what we're trying, we are trying to, this whole class is trying to break the mold of the mindset that, that if we're not careful causes us to treat Christianity like an 8 to 5 Monday through Friday job. Okay? And Christianity is not an 8 to 5 or 7 to 4 with an hour for lunch kind of, kind of job. It's, it's not. It's, a, it's not. It, you can't put it into a box, at least as I read Scripture and understand what God is asking and calling us to be. And so the, the, whole, the whole hypothesis for all of this is that we are putting it into a box. And, and how do we... How do we realize that it is not a box of our lives? It is not a compartment of our lives, but rather it is who we are. And so, with that said, I think it would only, it would only foster a greater compartmentalization if I came in here and said to you, okay, now you need X amount of minutes for this, and X amount of minutes for this, and X amount of minutes for this, and X amount of minutes for this. Now, we have looked at, when we're talking about holy time, and we pointed out from Scripture the importance of daily. The Bible uses the word daily. 
And I think we could come to that and say there is a need daily. Fair enough. But, but you see, in our, in our world, we want to know. Somebody ask you to do something. Or somebody ask you to come attend something. You know, would you come to this whatever that I'm having in my house? One of the, one of the first things, whether you ask it or not, one of the first things in your mind is how long? Right? That's just, that's just how we think as, as, as a general population of people. The question is, okay, well, well how long is this going to take? You know, you need, you need me to help you? Okay, I'm, I'm willing to help you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not taking away the generosity or the, the spirit of, uh, of willingness. But, but in my mind, I'm thinking, uh, yeah, I'm willing to do that. Fine, great. But in my mind, if I'm not careful, I, my, my thought process immediately, whether I ask the question or not, is how long? Because, because in my mind, it's not, that I'm, it's not that I'm trying to say, you see, we got a lot of good people in this room, okay? And so, and so it's not that, that good people are saying, boy, I can't wait to get this done so I can go do something else. That's, that's not our attitude. I, I'm, I'm not suggesting that at all. But our mentality is because it's how we are driven as a people. Our mentality is, okay, I, I'm going to go help. I'm going to come help you. And we're expecting this to take about an hour. So an hour from now, I'm going to be completed with that. So what do I do? What's next? What, 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 you know, what's next on the agenda? What's next on the schedule? What am I going to do next? And again, the, the attitude's not, let's hurry up and get this done so we can go do something else. It's just the nature of living in a clock-oriented world. And so... As we think about that in terms of our lives, I, wanna, I want us to think differently when it comes to spirituality. And, and I realize that we're asking of ourselves something that is very, very difficult. It's asking us to do something that is not human nature. Let me ask you, how would you define, how would you define Christianity? Could you define Christianity by asking you to do something that is not human nature? Would that be a good definition of, of Christianity? Christianity is not natural, right? It's, it's not. Read, read what Paul says to the, to the Galatians and read what he says to the Romans and read what he says to, to, to the Corinthians. He makes a huge contrast between f fleshly and, and spiritual. He, he, his, one of his overarching themes is you got a carnal, m fleshly, physical way of thinking, and then you've got a, then what God is challenging us is to have a spiritual, divine, supernatural, uncommon, not fleshly type of thinking. And so, I realize what I'm asking us to do is something that is not natural. And when I look at Christianity, that's what it is, isn't it? It's thinking differently than humanity or thinking differently than the rest of the world. And here's what I know. Depending on what our, depending on what our concept is of God's expectations, depending on... What our concept is of, of what it is that God is asking of us, that will affect how we, how we spend our time. Depending on how we view and how we process and how we I interpret what it is that God is asking of us and how, and how we develop that concept, it will affect then how, how we spend our time. And so what I want to do this morning is take us all the way back to the beginning. To the beginning of, for those of us who are Christians, to the beginning of our Christian life. Where, where do we start spiritually? Where does Christianity start? And the answer is found in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace have you been saved through faith. It is not of your own doing, 
It is the gift of God. Not a result of work so that no one has any place or right to boast. And so we go all the way back to, the, to where it all started. As a, as a Christian. Not, not to overlook, not to minimize, not, not to uh, ignore the importance of, of obedience and, and, and what God has commanded and asked of us. And I, I, I understand all that. I understand repentance. I understand baptism. But, but, but it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter how much you repented if God wasn't gracious. It, it wouldn't matter how many times you were baptized. If God hadn't have been gracious enough to, to put all of that into place for you and I to be saved. And, and, it, and it, it wouldn't matter if, if, according to Ephesians 2 and verse 8, if, if you and I, that there, I understand we have a part, there is a faith within us. But then verse 9 makes it very clear, don't you get prideful about that. Or don't you think that you earned it or deserved it or achieved it because God gave it to you. And so, and so we need to recognize last week, last week our main point was time is a gift from God. Every minute is a gift from God. Making the most of time, recognizing time is a gift from God. And so this morning I go back all the way in terms of our relationship with God to where it all started. It started because God, because God loved us. Because God is gracious. Because He's merciful. Because He gave us an opportunity. So, so Christianity then begins with God. And in this relationship then, what are, what are some questions? What, what are some things that I need to be considering? If you, if you want to make a list out of this, knock yourself out. If you're, if you're a list person... You know, knock your, when this is done, take your little piece of paper or, or circle the words and, and number them one, two, three, four. Because there, there are some categories, if you will, on this piece of paper in front of you. But the way I use it this morning, and, and the reason why I preface it in questions is so that you and I can analyze where we are. And I start, I start with where God started. God started with love, didn't He? So I'm starting right there. Where does love fit into our daily lives? You see, you want some, you want some schedule suggestions on how to live a spiritual life. Well, where, first question is, where does love fit in? We recognize it all started with love. It's all made available because God loves us. We only know how to love because He first loved us. Where does, where does love fit into our schedule? Specifically, how much time every day do we invest in loving God and loving each other? Matthew 22 makes that very clear, doesn't it? That's essentially where all the law and the prophets hang. If you, if you love God and you love your fellow man, then everything else kind of kind of falls into place, doesn't it? In terms of life and in terms of attitude. And ter- well, now, I, I love people who want, who, who want a list, a to-do list for, for Christianity. Just give me my to-do list and let me do it so that what? Go on, finish the thought, so that I can be done, right? Ain't that what we do with to-do lists? Isn't that how we process that mentally? Give me a to-do list so that I can get it done and and. Check off everything or mark out everything. And, and maybe that works good in, in your workplace. And, and maybe that works good on a production line. And, and maybe that gets the job done, you know, in the office or, or, or whatever. But, but it is not proper thinking for Christianity. In other words, what I mean by that is if you're making a list, okay... I'm gonna if I'm making a list here because I I am I'm a 
I'm a list person, okay? I like to I, I like to feel accomplished and I like to mark things off and I very typically make myself a to-do list and I like going down the list in terms of life and, and daily routines, okay? And so if you're making a list, number one on your list is love. Now here's the question. At what point do you get to mark that off? You know, if the, if the to-do list says, I'll just use my to-do list. Write a Sunday morning sermon, okay? Well, when I get a Sunday morning sermon done, guess what? I get to go check. I mean, and, and at some point, you know, maybe um, 11.30 on Saturday night, but at some point I get to go check, right? I have a hard time getting through with sermons. I love starting them, just have a hard time getting through with them. But at some point, I have to get through with it. You understand? It comes time to, to preach it. So at some point in my week, I'm, 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 marking, I'm marking that. At what point do you get to say, okay, I've, I've, I've loved enough today. I, I've, you know, I've. I've did this, and I've did this, and I've did this, and I've did this. And, and so, so God knows I love Him. I, 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 I've loved my fellow man. My fellow man knows I, I, I love them. And so, check. You see, it doesn't, doesn't work like that, does it? There's, there's not a point. Let, let me ask you this. At what point in the day... Does God get to a, a, an achievement point to where He says, You know what? I've loved Rodney enough today. Check. You know, I, I'm, 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 I've loved Rodney enough. I'm, I'm done with him. I'll see him again tomorrow. You know? How, how would you feel, right? If, if God treated us that way. If he, if he was checking us off of His list, you know? So, in turn... How do you think it makes God feel when, when we do that? As though by, by what we have done. You, you see, you need to spend 30 minutes today loving somebody. Okay, great. Take every day. I promise you if you, will, if you will do one act of love for somebody every day, seven days a week, your life will be a lot richer. That's a fair statement. I mean, I, I could stand up here and make that. The reality of it is, is that today it might take five minutes. You know, it might just be a simple phone call. Hey, I was thinking about you and how you're doing. And uh, I, I just, you know, I want you to know I, I was going to, when we hang up, I'm going to pray for you and I love you and, and I care about you. And that may take five minutes and boom. Tomorrow... To love someone, you may have to spend two hours with them, riding all over Lawrence County, in a car with them, listening to them about every problem from why the sun ain't blue. And that's going to take two hours, two and a half hours. You know, but when, when that's over, you, you, you can walk away and say, you know what? I gave up two hours of my day today. That's going to communicate love for the other person. I mean, you don't say that, right? But it, but it certainly communicates that. They know you care about them. Uh, they, they, they know you've made a great sacrifice uh, in your day and in your time. And so they, they feel loved. They feel appreciated. You see my point? One day takes five minutes. One day may take two hours. So it's just not fair to, okay, let's put this in a box. And, and when you get that box done, then, then you're done. It doesn't work like that. And, and the reality of it is, is that tomorrow may present two opportunities to love someone. And, and you may look up at the end of tomorrow. On Monday night when you go to bed, you may say, Wow, I spent two hours today loving two different people. A, 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 an hour at each. Guess what? I don't have to love anybody on Tuesday. I got two in today, you know. I punched two tickets today. I only got seven for the week, so 
And you see, if we start thinking like that, you let me tell you what I'm going to do? i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to punch all seven of them on Monday, and I'm going to be done. That's just the way I think. That's just a human in me that says, you know what? If God says you need to love somebody once a day, I got seven per week. I'm going to punch all seven of them tomorrow, and, I, and I'm done. I'll see you next Monday, right? See, it doesn't, it doesn't, you see, we say these things kind of humorously, but at the same time, it, it, if we're not careful, it, it can really be how we are processing our Christianity and in life. So, how much time? The first question. The second one is, and I always love this one. Can I be good enough today? And the answer to that is no. The answer to that is no. Can, can I be good enough? If you're trying to be good enough, you're, you're failing miserably. And so am I. We can't be good enough or we can't be good, if you will. But... But then the second question, and this is where, you know, this is where we need to guide people who are trying. You know, we've got people in our world today that are not Christians because they want to be perfect. And, and they feel like, until I can be perfect, then I can't be a Christian. And that is, that, that is a poor understanding of what God has called us to be. But at the same time, as we're trying to, where do we need to shift them to? Well, instead of thinking like that, it might serve us all well to ask this question. How much effort is made on a daily basis toward goodness? Can I be good enough? No. Will I be perfect? No. But is it a daily goal of mine to be good? To to invest and to involve in my life on a daily basis that of goodness. You know, I think about what Paul said in Romans 1. I am eager to preach the gospel to you who also are in Rome. He, he expressed this eagerness to do good. Why? Because he said in verse 14, I am a debtor. He recognized, I should have put verse 14 on there with verse 15. He recognized in Romans 1 that he... He owed something. And of course, he, he's going to say over there in verse three, uh, chapter 3, rather, there is none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He's going to admit those things in Romans chapter 3. He recognizes in the first chapter the relationship that he has to God. I'm a debtor. And because I'm a debtor, that brings an eagerness about me, specifically for Paul, to preach the gospel. But I, what I want you to see is the eagerness, the desire to do good, the desire to be about goodness, the desire to live righteously in obedience. Goodness is available. Look at Romans 8. Goodness is available through spiritual adoption. Can I be good enough? No. Can I be good? Yes. How? Well, it comes by being spiritually adopted. Listen to Romans 8, verses 16 and 17. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, watch it here, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided that we suffer with Him in order that we may be glorified with Him. You see, if you're, if you're making a list, for your daily spiritual schedule. If you're making a list, number two on your list is goodness. And we ask the same question we ask of love. Does there, does there come a point when you and I can say today, okay, I've been good enough today, check. And of course, we realize that no, we don't. We, 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 we admit that we can't be good in and of ourselves, but that we can be about goodness. But the only way we can be about goodness or righteousness or godliness is because of passages like Titus chapter 3, verses 5 through 7 there that remind us where we're washed, where our regeneration comes from, where our renewal comes from. Paul told the Corinthians that though the outward man is perishing, the inward man is being 
renew day. How does that work? What does that look like? Why is that the case? Well, obviously, Paul makes it clear in Romans 8, it's about the Spirit of God that lives and dwells within His children. And so, there is a goodness that we can obtain on a daily basis but there's not a point in which we, we've been good enough. And so we just we check that off and, and move on to the next thing. The third area, if you're making a list here, would be that of, of faithfulness. Are, are we being faithful with our time? Are we being faithful with our time to God? You see, is it the case that that? We look at perfection and we say, well, you know, I can't obtain perfection. And then we lose sight of faithfulness. But because we recognize that, that outside of God and, and outside of Christ, there is no righteousness that we can achieve or attain. Do, do, do we give up? Do we, do we just quit? Do people get discouraged spiritually? And the answer, of course, is yes. And so... And so they quit, you know, well, if I can't be perfect, then I won't be nothing. And then you, you go from one extreme to the other, and where, and where God is ultimately asking us to be is in the middle, and the middle is faithful. Am I being, am I being faithful? Is faithfulness important? Do I invest time in striving to be faithful? Again, if you're making a list, number three on the list Write the word faithful. Daily spiritual life. Faithfulness. And again, at what point? You know, if you're, if you're in your mind thinking, in order to be faithful, I need to do this, 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 and this on a daily basis. Then what you're doing is, you've got this, you've got this sub list over here that... That, you know, you've got A, B, C, and D under number three here. If, if we're, you know, word processing this list here. And, and A, B, C, and D indented from the left margin a little more here is whatever you determine to be faithfulness in the eyes of God. And if you're not careful, what you start doing is A, done. B, done. C, Done. And then, before long, you look down on your list there, and guess what? Everything under number three, faithfulness, has got a check mark beside it. And so you just come out here by number three, and you say, well, I've been faithful today. Well, well maybe you have, but, but in our minds, it's not a, it's not a block of time in which, in which I'm saying, okay, today I'm going to be faithful for an hour or two. Or three, but rather it is a concept that today I'm going to be faithful all day. I'm going to spend the entirety, I'm going to invest constantly in being faithful to God. Matthew 5 48, Jesus says, You therefore be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 9 says, God is faithful. We were called by that into a fellowship of His Son. 1 John 1 and verse 7 says, If we walk in the light as He is in the light, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us. There is, there is a continual motion of faithfulness. It is a continual life and a continual walk. Are we being faithful? If I was making a list here, number four would be, How much time do you allow for knowing the Bible daily? If I was making a list, the fourth thing on my list would be Bible study. And, and again, some people can do in 10 minutes what it takes others hours to do. And some people can get more. I, I'm a, I, I, am a, um, I am a block studier. And what I mean by that is that I've learned for me, if I spend 30 minutes doing something, I, I don't get much out of it. And, and you can ask Marie. I, I'm working on this one minute, that the next minute. I'm singing the next minute, so none of you want to be my secretary now. I'm, I'm, I'm humming the next minute. I'm, I'm, I'm on the phone the next minute because that's the, way, that's the way I study. 
If I sat down and just try to study an hour at a time, <laughs> I'll get up and go, boy, what just happened? But five minutes here and five minutes there and five minutes here, and, and you, you know, they got letters for that now. I think it's something like ADHD or something, you know. They didn't have letters when I was growing up. But, uh, but anyway, uh, the, the point is, is that you've got to figure out what works for you. So, so for me to stand up here and go, you need to study the Bible 30 minutes a day. <laughs> I mean, okay, fine, that's great. I promise you that if you will spend 30 minutes, seven days a week studying the Bible, you will live a richer life. That's fair. I, I can honestly make that promise because God, God makes that promise in, in His Word. Study to, study to show thyself approved, 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter says, the last thing he says is, I want you to grow. I want you to spend time studying God's Word that you might grow in the grace and the knowledge. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15. Some translations say, be diligent. Give your best. So yes, we need to be studying the Bible daily. We need to be making efforts for that. But, but it's not like we, well, okay, I've done that for today. What's next? But rather it is a continual mental process of I need to be developing my knowledge of God's Word daily. I need to be spending time in the Scriptures daily. If I was making a list, the fifth one on that list might be how much time are we setting aside daily to give what we can to the body of Christ? We read passages like Matthew 25 and the men with the talents there. We read passages like 1 Corinthians 12 and the various body parts and each part has a place. We read passages like Acts chapter 6 and we find the growing pains of the first century church and we find seven men who stepped up and said, we'll do. We will give. We will serve. We will fulfill this role by your appointment to make sure that this is taken care of. Are we doing that? Or are we stepping up? Are we agreeing to be used for the family? Are we giving our best as, as our part, whatever our part of the body is that the body might? Are we using our talents to be a blessing and glorify God? How much time daily are we setting aside to be a blessing to the family of God? And then finally... How much time do you spend every day reminding and reassuring yourself that you can be at peace with confidence? You can be, can't you? We can be at peace, can't we? We can have confidence, can't we? Did you hear Philippians 4? It's already been read this morning. Among many other passages, Hebrews 5, the anchor that is sure and steadfast. Many, many passages in the Bible. We can be at peace. And I believe we need to spend time daily Reminding ourselves, reassuring ourselves that we can have confidence in the Lord. You want your daily schedule? Well, there's some things that I'll suggest that we need to be doing daily, every day of our lives, for the Lord and making the most, investing our time wisely.